So you read the program, which was a little bit update, and there was some uh, discussion about what to do to uh, uh, prepare the talk of uh, Rafael Calvagante. And uh, we decided to have uh, a talk about syntax one, syntax two, syntax three, from uh, invasive to non-invasive assessment of coronary stenosis. It's a quite fascinating uh, field. Uh, you know, this is a cartoon of uh, Capodanno in the European Heart uh, Journal, and he showed that uh, we start with uh, the anatomic syntax score, and of course we did something for the residual syntax score, which has been published, the cabbage syntax score, uh, even the black composition syntax score, and the MI syntax score. But that was purely angiographic, and uh, uh, nothing including comorbidity of function. Uh, then there was in Italy, Ranucci, a surgeon who say in surgery, if you collect the age, the creatine clearance and eject ejection fraction, you can predict quite well the outcome of surgery. And uh, on the other hand, in Catania, Davide Capodanno said uh, if you had the Euro score to the anatomic syntax score, you will have a much better prediction of what happens with uh, surgery and PCI. So there was two things uh, developed. One, the clinical syntax score, and I transformed that in uh, logistic uh, clinical syntax score and additive clinical syntax score. And Davide Capodanno at uh, Catania developed the global risk classification. And then you see a line here going from syntax score to what became the functional syntax score. That's the action of uh, Bernard de Bruyne, Bill Ferron, and others. And as a matter of fact, the heart flow company has developed the uh, non-invasive uh, uh, fractional syntax score, the fractional, syntax, the fractional flow from the uh, heart flow. So we are looking uh, progress. If you combine, as I said, comorbidity and anatomy, you have already the syntax score too. And in the future, or currently, we are uh, merging even the syntax score too with the function. Let's go to this point very quickly. What is the functional syntax score? This is the paper of uh, Bill Ferron looking again at the uh, fame and he was recalculating the syntax score by incorporating ischemia producing lesion as determined by FFR decreases the number of high risk patients and better discriminate risk for the adverse event in patients with multivessel disease undergoing PCI. And you see here on the uh, left hand side the classic syntax score Per definition, you have three tercile for the low, the median, and the high risk. And as you could see in death MI, uh, there is some discrimination, but uh, not significant. You have to go to the MACE at one year to see with the uh, conventional syntax score the discrimination. But if you use the FFR, then there is uh, no long tercile. You see that you increase the group of uh, low functional syntax score, we grow up to 59%, uh, the two other group gets smaller, and you get uh, a very good discrimination for death and MI at one year, and also a very good discrimination for maize at one year. And we have applied that, and uh, tomorrow I will present the syntax score two, that's a novelty, it was a late breaking session at EuroPCR, but obviously in the syntax score too, and I will go in detail tomorrow, in more than 450 patients, we did FFR, IFR in all the vessel of the three vessel disease, and I'll show you the result tomorrow. Second point is that the anatomical syntax score combined with clinical variable, I told you that's a syntax score too, is a very do good decision making score based on interaction. And the syntax score too, which has been published in the Lancet by one of my fellow, Vasim Farouk, 
was developed by applying a Cox proportional hazard model to the result of syntax trial, obtaining a combination of clinical and anatomical independent predictors of four years old cause mortality. You take the anatomical syntax score, you take the left main, the age, the creatine clearance, the ejection fraction, the gender, the peripheral vascular disease, the COPD, and you have the syntax score too. Now, I'm not very much a statistician. I mean, I like, I force the statistician to show me statistics. And that's what they did for me. Here you have the syntax score. On the vertical axis, you have the risk for death at four years, the log of the hazard ratio. And you see the solid line are the surgeon. And as you could see, the surgeon are immune for the syntax score, which is in the horizontal axis from 20 to 60. Nothing happens if the syntax score increases. But with PCI, if you increase the syntax score, then the risk of mortality at four years increase. And the equipoise, the point of equality, is about 18. Now, let's look at the interaction with age. We know that with age, the surgeon gets a problem, and they get the problem around 75 years old. So there is the crossing of the dot line of PCI and the solid line of surgery, and at the age of 75, PCI has an advantage on uh, surgery. So the balance is in favor of PCI, and because it is in favor of PCI, I can increase my ambition in terms of syntax score. Instead of eight, taking 18, I could go to 25, maybe. Now you go to creatine clearance. You see the surgeon uh, from a creatine clearance of uh, 90 ml, 60 ml, it goes less well. But it's even worse for PCI because we use a lot of contrast during the procedure. The surgeon has the heart lung machine. So again, an interaction. In other words, when you have a bad uh, creatine clearance, then it's better to go to surgery, as a matter of fact, and you should re retract somewhat your ambition of syntax score. The same is true from a low ejection fraction. A patient with low ejection fraction going to surgery do very well. So in this case also, you, will be, you have to be modest with your syntax score. If you go to left main and three vessel disease, we know that left main has an advantage and three vessel disease is a disadvantage. So for the main stem, we have an advantage and we can increase the syntax score. Fail, female and male, female doesn't do too well with PCI. We have learned that in the uh, syntax study. So a female, you have to be careful with the syntax score. COPD, use COPD, look at the solid line. It's clear that COPD crossed the line. There is interaction. Uh, if you have COPD, it's better to go to PCI, and then you can be a little bit more ambitious with the anatomic syntax score. Peripheral vascular disease, uh, very important, but run in parallel, so no interaction. And diabetes also run in parallel at a low level and no interaction. So it was a long explanation of one slide, but it is very important because we have now, two, three weeks ago, we have made public the calculator of the syntax score too. You can go to the website www.syntaxcore.com, calcification two stop, etc., and then you put, uh, uh, as you could see, syntax score anatomy 22, age 60, creatinine 120, ejection fraction 30, uh, left main, uh, female, uh, COPD, and uh, peripheral vascular disease. And you see that the syntax score for PCI is 43, uh, so it is a mortality of about 15%, uh, while the mortality of cabbage is 18.2.6, so the calculator will advise in that patient to go to surgery. You can go and use it. We have used it in the syntax too. I'm not going to comment on that slide, but you see the study coordinator were able to 
separate the patient on PCI on only equipoise of cabbage only. Then we went to a classical heart team, and then the heart team sometimes overruled, but in general respected the concept. Are we liable in the syntax core? I mean, uh, it's very simple, published in the uh, JAK. Uh, here we have a good concordance in 61%, below 33. Above 33, we had a good uh, concordance in 12.2. But you see here discordance between call up and uh, the side. And here you see also discordance with the side. So we need a new instrument. So we create the syntax core uh, CT, and we are working now with the hard flow. Of course, on the multi-slide CT scan, they are measuring all the diameter stenos, so you can very uh, reliably set the number of segments. They are measuring the length of the obstruction. You know, visually, the doctors will say plus minus 20 millimeter. Uh, to do uh, tortuosity in 2D is a nonsense, but to do in 3D is uh, highly reproducible and significant. The multi-slice CT scan is the master of the calcium, so you should use that much better than on fluoroscopy. And finally, uh, many years ago, I spent one day in Chicago with a surgeon to define what is a diffuse disease, and it was a tremendous uh, arguing there. 74% uh, of the vessel has to be less than two millimeter, but now we can get that automatically. So this is the work that uh, Rafael has done, showing that the multi-slice syntax core 2 is very close to the syntax core 2 and geography. So we are today here at that point, and uh, the proposal of trial that we're starting now is uh, if you have chest pain, you got the quantitative multi-slice CT scan, you get the anatomical syntax core, the FFRCT, the clinical factors, you have the syntax score 3 in this patient. We are still non-invasive. Then we go to the heart team, if it is a three-vessel disease with main stem. We have a provisional decision-making based on the syntax score 3. And then, with a lot of information available, you go finally to the cat lab. But the main entry in the system will be the multi-slice CT scan. And I will illustrate that to finish. Uh, you see here case volume rendering. Uh, we have a main stem who doesn't look uh, very fit. Uh, we have a proximal lady with a small nodule of calcium there. We have a trifurcation with the intermediate here, which is narrow and calcify, at least on the volume rendering. Uh, the CERB looks okay, and the obtuse marginal here looks okay. It's hidden by the great cardiac vein, but okay. And then in the right coronary artery, we have two tiny, tiny nodules of calcium. Now you go to the maximal intensity projection, and then you realize that that main stem is disease, that the nodule at the base of the LED is an issue, that the intermediate indeed was narrow and calcified, and the two nodules of uh, uh, calcium does not seem too bad. You go to the cat lab, and a fellow is doing the angiography, and you say, how is the main stem? Oh, he would say, not too bad. It's, uh, there's no narrowing in the main stem. Uh, there is maybe a problem at the ostium of the LED. I agree the intermediate is uh, small and diseased. The circumflex is OK. It has an average interventional cardiologist in training he will jump, he will jump on this right, uh, like uh, a bull seeing a red flag and uh, put some stand there, big, large, etc., etc. Now you go now to heart flow because we are still the day before. The right coronary artery has an FFR of 0.88. Uh, we give point on angiography to point to the syntax core. But when we went in the lab and the FFR was 0.99, there was no reason to do something in that vessel. If you look at the multi-slide CT scan uh, FFR CT, you see that already before the trifurcation, the FFR is 0.21, immediately after the ostium of the LED is 0.80, and then went down. Of course, the intermediate is positive. 
Uh, the circumflex is, of course, behind the main stem, but has no increasing gradient. And you can scroll, you can scroll from the distal vessel to the proximal and create that curve. You see that you are below 0.08. At the side of the ostium, it's here. There's still a gradient in the main stem. And if you don't believe the day after, you can show uh, during a pullback that you have some gradient in the LED, but a lot of gradient in the main stem. So what was technically speaking this time an angiographic syntax scores of 14 with some kind of uh, uh, LED and intermediate uh, trification 0110 uh, and a total score of 14 suddenly uh, from the uh, heart flow functional became 24. And uh, in terms of planning, uh, in this case, you should not only treat the proximal LED, but you should uh, stent the whole uh, main stem and the proximal LED to improve the case. My last slide is uh, just to show you a new trial that we have just initiated. Uh, we take patients with three vessel disease with or without left main on conventional angiography although you can start with multi-slide CT scan. Uh, the trial is, uh, is a grand griever, is uh, general electric health. So we use the multi-slide CT scan revolution. And then we don't randomize the patient. We don't randomize the patient. We randomize the doctors. We randomize the heart team. And as you could see, the heart team A either receive the multi-slide CT scan alone or receive the angiography alone. And he has to do this uh, syntax score and take a decision, and the syntax score too, and take the decision surgery or PCI. After that, he get the heart flow, the FFR uh, CT, and he can refine his uh, decision. That's a secondary uh, endpoint. And then finally, he has to say how many stent, how many bypass he's going to use. And then he's unblind for the conventional angiography, and he has the final decision. And we can see what is the incremental effect of a normal angiography after the non-invasive. And in the other arm, you have only the angiography. You have to take the decision on syntax score and comorbidity but at the end you get unblind and you got the multi-slide CT scan. So that's really trying to enter a new era. I think that uh, I will come back with pleasure to Rio de Janeiro, Rio de Janeiro three, four, five years from now and see how many surgeons are going to operate only on the multi-slide CT scan because after all that's the goal. And I think we are getting close and close and close. Thank you.